Hello, and welcome to the Hoosier Huddle Post Game Show. I'm Sammy Jacobs. This is David Sugarman. We're here from a victorious Memorial Stadium. IU knocks off Georgia Southern 52-17 uh, in a game that took well too long. <laughs> a, a lot of official reviews, especially in the first quarter, which was well over an hour. But uh, IU came out. They ran the ball well. Uh, they they threw the ball well, although they didn't throw that much. They dominated the game uh, from start to finish, scoring in all three phases. Uh, got three takeaways on on defense as well. David, what's your main takeaway from today? Yeah, the main takeaway has to be the running game, particularly Morgan Ellison. Mike Majette didn't play today. It sounded like they didn't play him because. Uh, they wanted to rest up a couple of guys. I think they did the same thing with Rashard Fan today. But Morgan Ellison came in and was really, really good. Look, it's a grain of salt because it is against Georgia, <coughs> Georgia Southern, excuse me, but 25 carries for 186 yards, just 20 some yards shy of the freshman record set by Anthony Thompson. He scores two touchdowns, and on really his only miscue of the day, Indiana ends up scoring. He fumbles at the one. Simi Cobb's there to fall on it in the end zone. I think at that point, IU went up 21 nothing, and they really never looked back. But like you said, they also scored in all three phases of the game, which is impressive. They get, obviously, a few offensive touchdowns. They get a defensive touchdown late. And Jason Harris, for the second straight week, gets a punt return for yep. a touchdown. And really, I mean, just a spectacular story. What a comeback story. You're going to see a lot written about him the next few weeks. Yeah, and the only drawback from the Jason Harris touchdown is that they're not going to punt for this kid anymore. Right. <laughs> um, it, it was a kind. Of, I, I was shuffling between the sideline and going back and forth. But what it seemed to me is that it was a short punt. He fielded it on the bounce. Usually, guys get out of their defensive lanes. He made a few nifty moves. He got a big block from Khalil Bryant and mm -hmm. went to the house. So that was impressive. Morgan Ellison. I really thought that that fumble was a touchdown. Mm -hmm. uh, but Sevy Cobbs jumps on it. Uh, to me, the way they used Lego and Ramsey was really interesting. They took Lego out in every, I think, every red zone opportunity that they had and put Ramsey in, whether or not that, they did a lot of things to get other uh, Big Ten mm -hmm. opponents ready on tape that they showed. They showed the muddle huddle on, on an extra point. Uh, they ran a kind of a, a shovel pass pitch to Ellison, and, and then they used Pete Ramsey in the red zone as well as, as for most of the second half there. Uh, but you, you can see the game plan is to play both of these guys. I thought Lego, despite only playing, throwing 13 passes, played well. Once he took that low hit, his day was done. Yeah. Um, it, it, he talked to the media afterwards, so that means he's probably good to go. Right. Um, and Tom Allen said that if needed be, he would have been placed back in the game. Uh, but the game was already in hand, and there's no... There's no reason to put it back out there, especially after I think Georgia Southern was called for five or six uh, blocks below the waist on uh, chop blocks on offense. The low hit on Lego, it just they were playing below the waist, and, and you don't want to get him hurt because as good as Peyton Ramsey is, we saw him struggle today throwing the ball. I believe he only he only completed three passes, um, and he just didn't it wasn't clicking like it was last week. So they're going to need Lego in the future to, to go through there. And defensively, man, you know, IU fans all offseason had nightmares about this this offense. Uh, going back to playing Navy in, in 2012 and 2013 and then Nickel State in, in 05, uh, where, you know, one double-A team comes in here, runs that triple option, you can't stop them. But, I, you know, they, they came out, they played that first drive to perfection. Uh, I don't believe that Georgia Southern got – you know, a yard on that drive. The first play was a negative play. That set the tone. And then, you know, the offense took after that. And then you got that um, that strip six from Andre Brown uh, to close out the game where Georgia, Georgia Southern was calling timeouts. The game was well over. And, you know, they're calling three timeouts and all that stuff. So I, I, I get it. You want to work on things, but it's kind of, you know, you deserve that, uh, that, that uh, strip six as well. But I, I thought overall IU played well. You're two and one. This is a game you needed to win and win convincingly, uh, especially with all the other things that went on in the Big Ten today. Uh, I, I didn't think Nebraska was up on Rutgers all that much. Purdue came back to earth. Uh, they were down 20, 28 10 late in that game. So for IU to come out here and make a statement like they did against, um, uh, against Georgia Southern, a tough triple option team, was. 
was impressive. Yeah, I think there are both sides of the coin. A lot of what IU did was impressive, and a lot of what IU did was against Georgia, you know, against Georgia Southern. I think you got to look at both sides of the coin. But they forced three turnovers after not forcing any in the first two games. I mean, Tom Allen talked about that a lot in the post-game press conference. And I got a couple penalties were taken away. Excuse me, turnovers were taken away in the Virginia game. But fact of the matter is the stats were what they were. So to get three turnovers, which I think he said in the post-game press conference, is the goal. The goal They'd is really like to get three a game. And I think Tom Allen has the right mindset. While it was eating away at him a little bit, the turnovers kind of come and go in waves. And uh, you'll get some lucky breaks. And, you know, you'll get some bad breaks today. You know, they, they had, did a good job getting their head on the football. And uh, it was all forced fumbles, too. And I think that was kind of to be expected. Uh, you know, a Georgia Southern team that very rarely passes the football to get interception today, it was going to be kind of hard. I think they did have one one or two sacks, but more importantly, they were getting in the backfield and getting a lot of negative runs, which is one of our keys to the game before the game, even if it doesn't translate in sacks because they're not going to pass the ball all that much. You've got to get in the backfield, you've, and you've got to you know stop these guys before they get to the line of scrimmage, and IU did a really good job of that today. And uh, they're going to need to do a really good job of it next week because if it's Trace McSorley or Saquon Barkley, I mean, uh, Penn State is not Georgia Southern, and uh, Beaver Stadium is not Memorial Stadium. No, uh, Beaver Stadium, IU has, has never won there, no. and, and that's going to be the <laughs> tough part. But to me, also on the defensive side, being on the sideline, you heard Tom Allen say, we got to finish this game. We're going to finish hard. We're, we're going to go out there and hit somebody. He was out on the field yelling at his defense, and I think Andre Brown's strip sack really put an exclamation point on that on finishing that you know halfway through that second half you're like they're kind of taking the foot off the pedal it's 45 17 they're gonna score a garbage touchdown here make it you know how you covered a large spread 24 and a half points and they finished and they finished strong and that was good to see regardless of what the the outcome is going to be next week yeah there was just a sense of urgency and really an attention to detail and the first few weeks that really was absent for you know a lot of the Kevin Wilson era particularly special teams I don't know if it was overlooked or if it was just bad but in the Kevin Wilson era special teams wasn't good Griffin Oaks has been really good through the first few weeks Jason Harris like we said uh, two touch two punt returns for touchdowns that already ties an IU record for for a single season uh, it was Mitchell Page among with a handful of other guys so like I said, all three phases of the game were really solid today. Still a whole lot to work on, but uh, a lot to be happy with. And uh, now the Big Ten, you know, grind really starts. They got that one little reprieve with Charleston Southern in two weeks. But after that, uh, there's really not another cupcake on the schedule. You know, you saw around the Big Ten today, they've got Michigan who beat up on Purdue. Uh, look, they're Purdue, but they were competitive for a lot of that game. They were, you know, they were they, up at halftime. They were up at halftime. Up, I don't know if they were up at the end of the third, but it was 10-7 late in the third quarter. So, you know, now the grind really starts, and uh, we'll see if uh, if it was just because it was against Georgia Southern, or if uh, or if this IU team is for real going forward. But uh, two and one, and Tom Allen's first uh, real win streak of his uh, of his coaching career, head coaching career. Yeah, uh, you know, the most important thing was get out of here two and one, and. You know, hopefully these injuries are minor. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what happens with Marcelino and some of these other guys who Tom Allen didn't comment about, comment about at the post-game press conference. But the most important thing, you're out of here two and one. You have a chance to get out of that first week of October, three and two, and get into that the heart of that schedule where maybe you can spring an upset, get that fourth win, and then go to that back end of the schedule where it is still Rutgers, Illinois, and Purdue. Mm -hmm. Well. Purdue looks a lot better. It's still you're not facing Penn State, Michigan, Wisconsin, sure. Michigan State. And worth pointing out, Maryland, who really impressed a lot of people through the first few weeks, lost, I think the final was 38-10 at home to UCF today. So take that for what you will. I don't know if that's just an inconsistent team or, or, or what it is, and now you won't play Maryland until I think week eight or nine of the season. There's some gettable games on the schedule. Obviously, one game at a time. I use focus for next week is Penn State. The two and one right now. Like you said, that was the goal coming out of this week. They take care of business after you know a really long break. It didn't look like they had a ton of rust, at least not based off of you know the big break after losing the FIU game to Hurricane Irma and all that. But uh, 52 17, I'd sign up for that. Yeah, well that does it for the Hoosier Huddle post game show. I'm Sammy Jacobs. This is David Sugarman. I use wins 52-17. We'll be back next week uh, to, to cover Penn State. 
keep coming back to HoosierHuddle.com for all your post-game uh, coverage, your pre-game coverage for next week, and of course our photo gallery. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your night.